Welcome to this video. In this tutorial, we will explain the embedded element technique in Abacus. We will discuss the necessity and concept of this method, as well as its types, significant errors, and limitations. Please don't forget to support our channel by a like, your comments, or subscribing. Engineering problems often involve multiple materials, with one material located inside another. The surrounding material is known as the host region, while the inner segment is named the embedded region. For example, in modeling composite materials, the resin matrix is considered the host region, while the fibers are the embedded region. In reinforced concrete, the concrete is the host region, and the reinforcing rebar is the embedded region. Another example is foam-filled lattice structures, where the foam is considered the host, and the lattice is the embedded region. The exact method for modeling these structures is to create an exact geometry of both the host and embedded parts. However, the host part is a complicated region, due to the multiple cuts of the embedded region. Creating and meshing this part usually requires significant effort, and low-quality mesh is often used due to the complexity. Additionally, a huge number of meshes increases the computational cost. The alternative method that prevents these problems is the embedded element technique. In the embedded element technique, instead of cutting the host part and merging it with the embedded region, we assume that both the host and embedded parts are complete. Therefore, we create them as separate parts, mesh them, and then put them together. In the next step, we define embedded constraints between nodes of the two parts. In fact, the displacements of the embedded nodes depend on the displacements of the host region. For example, consider nodes 5 and 6 of the embedded region. These nodes are between nodes 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the host region. The displacement of node 5 depends on the displacement of these four nodes and is computed by interpolation of the element. Similarly, the displacement of node 6 can be calculated based on the displacement of nodes 3 and 4. Different element types can be used in the element set containing embedded elements and the element set containing the host elements. However, all host elements can have only translational degrees of freedom, and the number of translational degrees of freedom at a node on the embedded element must be identical to the number of translational degrees of freedom at a node on the host element. In two-dimensional modeling, the embedded meshes could be truss, beam, or solid elements, while the host meshes are solid elements. In axisymmetric modeling, the embedded meshes could be membrane, gel, surface, or solid elements, while the host meshes are solid elements. Please note that these two types are only available in Abacus standard. In three-dimensional modeling, the embedded meshes could be truss, beam, membrane, shell, surface, or solid elements, while the host meshes are solid elements. Material redundancy is the most significant concern in embedded element technique. In exact modeling of the geometry we model embedded and cut host parts. Instead in embedded technique we model these two complete parts. This amount of the material is redundant in our model and causes extra stiffness and strength in the results. If the embedded volume fraction is low, or if the host region is significantly softer than the embedded region, this error can be ignored. However, in cases where the embedded volume fraction is significant and the stiffnesses of the two materials are comparable, we should compensate for this error. To do so, we should use reduced stiffness for the embedded part, which is the embedded stiffness tensor minus the host stiffness tensor. Please watch our next videos to learn more about this compensation. Please note that using the embedded element technique has some limitations as follows. Firstly, this method cannot model separation or movement between two materials. If your simulation requires the accurate modeling of separation or movement between two parts of your model, 
it is recommended to use alternative techniques. Secondly, this technique is not available for host elements with rotational degrees of freedom, such as shells. Thirdly, the number of translational degrees of freedom at a node on the embedded element must be identical to the number of translational degrees of freedom at a node on the host element. Fourthly, this method will not constrain rotational degrees of freedom of the embedded nodes when shell or beam elements are embedded in solid elements. Thank you for watching this video. Please support our channel by a like and your comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more content.